Ladies and gentlemen, warm welcome to all of you welcome at the Dutch Masters 2024. Within a few moments, we are starting with the Eddie Versace World Cup Grand Prix in Zemplar, RRC Versace. In the Goede Middag Tournament, welcome to the Dutch Masters. We have a little bit of a 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 bit of van de half zes beginnen, het begin met de zevenlag staat in de kant niet voor de programma van de jongen Ernst Kleen. Ambitieus, ons doel, maar zonder de prestatie, sport en vakmij, dat wij respect voor arme mensen centraal blijven staan. Daar staat het Ernst Kleen voor. De stemming so far, met de titel van Sweden in de Leeds, met de score 72. Second position for Matthias Alexander Raan for Germany, 69 points. Third, Anna Scottor Herald for Denmark, with the purple score of 64. At the fourth position, John Fari and Isma Bent with a total of 57. At the sixth position, Morgan Bamerson for France with a total of 56 points. The winner at Saturday will have 20 points added to the results so far. We de combinatie op zaterdag in de kilometer uur 25 punten en de titel dus aan de denking voor Zweden 32 punten komt dus ver. Maar wie is al aan de raad? Daar zal het tegen de denking testen van Anna Schopper en al de markt 64. En Lottie Paar en Isabel Rijks op de hele lieve plaats 57 punten. En hij die hier aan deze punt dus punten van haar.
A very warm welcome, everybody, and uh, delighted to have you with us here at the Dutch Masters. Welcome along to uh, FEI TV. For this, the FEI Dressage World Cup here in Sertogenbosch, we are set for the Grand Prix competition ahead of uh, the freestyle at the weekend. But this is what it's come down to now, the final leg of the uh, Western European League. It is the uh, 11th and final round last chance to score points and uh, find your way into a qualifying position to uh, head to those FEI Dressage World Cup finals uh, in Riyadh in April. And what a lineup we've got uh, here this week when you uh, include 10 of the top 22 on the Western European League coming forward. And they're all looking to try and shuffle the pack in some way or another. At the moment, Patrick Kittle for Sweden sits on top. That could yet change if Lottie Fry can pick up a full house here and uh, make it three wins in a row. We'll wait to see. Isabel is here as well as uh, Diana Porsche, of course, looking to ensure she has a place. And then as you drop down the list as well, there are those also trying to push their way up into those nine qualifying positions and uh, find their way through to the final, including this week, the uh, leading Dutch rider. Of course, here on home soil, there'll be uh, Emily Schultens. We've got uh, the two from Belgium with Larissa Poliès and uh, Flora de Wynne. And then in there as well, also uh, Charlotte delft and uh, of course, the Swiss rider, Charlotte Rogerson. So a lot to play for when we get to the freestyle. The Grand Prix, of course, will set that up nicely here this afternoon. And uh, we've got nine different nations heading down the centre line. It's, of course, uh, filled with some of the great stars of the Netherlands, but alongside them, stars of the dressage world from as far afield as New Zealand and Morocco, but to the more familiar names, like I say, there of uh, Isabel Verf and uh, Morgan Bartdon, both going well after a uh, strong season. Isabel, of course, looking to add yet more World Cup titles, perhaps, this year to the mix. Uh, Lottie Fry already winning two this season on Everdale in the freestyle last two times out after that second place in London could she make it three we'll wait to see but there is such a strong field yes you can pick out the big names this is always the case but you just never quite know what will happen horses and riders working together in unison here are our judging panel joining us at E is uh, Dutch judge Mariette Saunders van Gunswinkel at H at Raphael Seller from uh, France Ulrich Neville is the president of the Grand Jury. She is sat for Germany at C. Also for the Netherlands is uh, Yanni van Twist at M. And uh, joining us from Sweden is uh, Lars Andersen, who will be sat there on the long side at letter B. So there is the bell. There is our uh, president of the Grand Jury ready to uh, symbolise the start of uh, the tests here as they bring their judging expertise. Well, it is time as the music kicks in for us to get ready for the start of this Grand Prix competition. 17 combinations on the start list tonight. Yeah, yeah, entertaining evening of dress art, that is for sure. And of course, plenty looking not only for the points, but just for their horses and the riders and horses too able to bring their uh, best and most competitive uh, performance the uh, uh, big night big afternoon I should say on Saturday when we have uh, the freestyle but the uh, Grand Prix the integral precursor to that it uh, certainly sets the level sets the standard and of course will give us a few clues I do not doubt as to perhaps what will happen when we get to the freestyle the Grand Prix as always is that ultimate test for the horse and the rider. The lights just about ready to come up. This uh, beautiful setting here in Sotogenbosch. It is a uh, historic event that has uh, been a uh, huge part of uh, the dressage calendar over the years. And uh, very much a big favorite amongst the uh, Dutch fans. Their chance to uh, see their riders, of course, for the uh, second time, one of two rounds held here in the Netherlands. We enjoyed Amsterdam, and of course that was the uh, win there, the uh, win for Lottie and uh, Everdell. Of course, with the Van Ols, Everdell, 
course, big Dutch favourite as well as uh, a British rider, so uh, plenty of connections. But it's been a tremendous journey from uh, Herning back at the uh, end of October through to uh, Lyon, Madrid, London, Basel, of course, then to Amsterdam, Gothenburg, and now here in Sotogenbosch. And of course, well, I missed out Madrid uh, there as uh, well as, uh, well, yeah, I should have mentioned Stuttgart, Mechland, and um, Newminster. But uh, there's so many amazing rounds. And uh, here we go now to kick things off in front of our uh, illustrious panel of judges here this afternoon. It is the first of the Dutch riders. Great to uh, see Dirk-Jan van Vottert getting his chance at home here this afternoon with the Hexagons Granville. It's gilding by Hexagons uh, Louisville out of a uh, Rubiquil mare. Owned by uh, Yasmin Tomkjov. Yasmin, who was a uh, Hungarian rider, in fact, has ridden this horse through uh, a lot of the youth levels of the sport and has uh, had a fabulous uh, career in the uh, Grand Prix and uh, three star and four star competitions. It was a horse that uh, Dirk actually first rode when it came up to uh, international level. That was uh, back in 2021. He competed it then in a few freestyles and uh, Grand Prix and then has managed to find his way back into the saddle. And in fact, last time out in uh, Gothenburg, where he was competing, he uh, had the opportunity to uh, ride this horse in what was actually Dirk's first ever World Cup competition. He ended up finishing in Gothenburg in uh, ninth place in the Grand Prix. He scored 66.282 that day. I'm sure perhaps looking to uh, move that up a little bit today. And then he went on to score 71.305 in the freestyle to finish in seventh. First out into this test as we uh, get to see some stunning combinations here this evening from Sir Token Bosch. Unfortunately, as you can see, you got a little bit weak at the walk at the entry while I was talking, but you're just going to have to hope that the horse just relaxes, settles down. Of course, the marks you're seeing on the screen for the uh, individual movements are a combined average. 6.7 of the marks from the five judges and then a running percentage is a uh, overall percentage score to this point within the test a little bit tense in that rain back just needs to watch everything and just a little bit rushed to see a strong crowd in here for what is the opening day of the show but it is just the dressage grand prix night of course it'll be a full house here on a saturday afternoon for the freestyle comfortable in the collected work there with the uh, passage in the PF and you can see that reflected in the marks as well.
can see in the walk a moment ago how the horse just struggling just to relax through the back. Again, very happy in that massage and PF. Very nice transition. Well, fingers crossed, we are back with you now. Apologies for our uh, moment there. We were uh, a little bit intermittent, but we are here and we have enjoyed that opening test. Struggling a little bit with the uh, walk and uh, certainly getting penalised in that respect from the judges. But the judges overall certainly uh, bringing the scores together like this 67, 609, 68, 587, 68, 587, 69, 39, 63, 370. It is 67. 
0.478%. So that is the uh, first to go in this FEI Dressage World Cup here in uh, Sertogenbosch, the indoor Brabant horse show here in uh, the Dutch Masters. For the first of the uh, Dutch riders, now we turn to New Zealand and fabulous to see Melissa Galway, Miss Melissa Galloway, sorry, here riding uh, this ride. This for New Zealand. It is uh, her Anne Parks and uh, Rodney Parks' gelding called uh, Windermere GOBW. It's by the uh, sire Johnson TN. It's out of a uh, pumpy mare, Melissa, who has uh, previously ridden this horse at the World Championships in uh, 2022, riding in uh, Herning. And uh, tremendous to see her back in uh, Europe competing. She spent obviously a lot of time with this horse competing much closer to home well, in uh, Australia and of course at home in uh, New Zealand throughout the course of uh, last year after the uh, World Championship outing, which I think was the one and uh, well, the time they brought the horse over to Europe on the run in to uh, going to Herning back to uh, New Zealand. She has competed in World Cup classes both in uh, Victoria in Australia in uh, October last year where she won the freestyle and also in Nakatopo in New Zealand in November of last year where she uh, again took the freestyle. In terms of Grand Prix performances came in New Zealand in uh, November last year when they picked up a score of 74.218%. So we had a very strong opening line and has been well rewarded. It's a much more relaxed start to the test and this horse has got a beautiful gait, wonderful paces, very agile. Leaving the balance a little bit there towards the end of the second half pass. So be careful they're not rushing too much in the rain back. Keep that connection. Just like to see a little bit more energy in the Piaf. Just struggling as we saw with the, you can see the mark there with the transition from uh, the PF to the Passage. Again, could perhaps 
just open the frame a little bit more, allow themselves to take a bit more risk through the extended canter. bit wide in the first of the pirouettes. with this uh, final passage and Piaf, although unfortunately getting let down a little bit with the trot work that we saw a uh, little earlier. Of course, there was a small mistake as well in the one-time tempi changes, but you can see there's a lot of tension there that she's just trying to keep everything nice and relaxed. It's a huge environment to be coming into, and of course, it's a tremendous experience for the both of them. But it's been a... Uh, Tremendous opportunity to uh, see Melissa Galloway competing, the uh, New Zealand star there with uh, Windermere GOBW. Go back. So just asking for a bit more, I feel, in the trot work today. And started off very strongly, actually, with those uh, trot half passes and the PF and Passage, certainly up towards the end so as the second to go the second score is on route and as we know at the moment it is a uh, 67 4 7 8 total that should be somewhere nearby but i'm not quite sure we'll be able to overcome that uh, score i think it won't be too far away but it'll uh, just be a little bit underneath. We'll see where that eventually came to rest with uh, the judges' oh, scores. Oh, 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 second combination oh, here in this oh, FEI Dressage oh, World Cup Grand Prix oh, wide review oh, in that of the Dutch oh, Masters. Oh, there is the score 67283 at E, 66739 at H, 68265 at N, and 66630 at B. So 67.30, sorry, 66.30 is the final score, 66.630. So it becomes 67.370. It is only 0.1 of a mark away. 67.370 is that final score. Diana Porsche uh, is next, riding here with Dahoud 3, the Austrian combination. And, uh, Diana, who is currently sitting in ninth place on the Western European League at the moment, after uh, performances this year in Amsterdam and uh, Basel. She also rode in Lyon. She picked up points, though, as well in the uh, additional rounds in uh, Hungary and in the uh, Czech Republic. 
with uh, some strong results. There it has uh, put her in a very good position coming here. She has, of course, had a very successful career coming through uh, the youth ranks of the sport up into uh, under 25 uh, championships. She competed before that at uh, Young Rider and Junior Europeans over the years. And uh, the horse that she's riding here today is Dahoo 3. It, it, she's looking, though, obviously to try and qualify for what would be her first ever World Cup final, Dressage World Cup final. On the side, she's got two strong rides. This is the horse she took with her to uh, Amsterdam. She also has another called uh, Douglas that she rode in Lyon and in Basel. Dahoud is a 10-year-old. It's a uh, Hanoverian gelding. Started with this horse last year. His poor rider, Sergio Guerrero Lopez, the Spanish rider. His two together are scored a 70.761 in Grand Prix. They've done that twice, actually, got exactly the same score. One day it meant they were sixth, the other day it meant they were eleventh. And at the moment, again, just needing to keep that connection and stay relaxed through the rain back. A little bit rushed. So Just asking the horse really just to relax, perhaps just take the rain down a little bit more in that extended walk. Take during the transition.
relaxing a little bit more as we go into the test, getting into these latter stages. Still a little bit down in terms of their performances from recent Grand Prix tests. Finish though, and a rising young talent in the sport, and it'll be a tremendous achievement for uh, her if she can uh, find her way in to uh, that World Cup final in a few weeks' time in uh, Riyadh. Of course, uh, right on the bubble in terms of qualification. We'll find out after the freestyle on uh, Saturday there, but uh, down a push and uh, Hood three. It's the mark very quick, so it is a little bit down on the score for them from Amsterdam, where they did so well to 67-283 uh, to is uh, that final Grand Prix mark. And uh, then that breaks down across uh, the uh, judges, as we've just seen. So it means she's still smiling. And that's what matters. She's happy with uh, the way that her and the horse have uh, managed to go here. So uh, pleased for the pair of them. Although, as I say, it's just sad. It's just that little bit down on uh, recent scores. A lot of competition still to come. Only three of the 17 gone so far. It's going to be a uh, big afternoon or evening here of uh, sport. Diana there. I mean, the mark's exceptionally close. I mean, her percentage overall, 67,283, is only, to all intent, 0.2 of a mark behind our still leader, the first to go, Dirk Jan van der Wotte, who uh, leads the way on 67.478. And uh, Melissa Gonaway sat as she was, therefore, still in uh, second place, as it currently stands. But we uh, move on. There'll be many a changes, I do not doubt. As uh, we can see now, we have another chance uh, for the home fans to be enthralled by one of their riders. It is the Deventa de Lister riding here with Hero, the uh, gelding by uh, Johnson Tien out of the 07 mare of uh, Jan uh, Peter Dasman and uh, Lorenz uh, van Lieren. With Hero, part of the Dutch team at the European Championships in uh, Risenbeck last year, qualified to uh, ride in the special as well. It was a horse she'd ridden previously in uh, the under-25 Europeans where she'd been on the silver medal winning team in 2021. 12-year-old gelding. Recently, they uh, made the trip out to uh, Doha, to uh, al Shakab in uh, Qatar where they competed in the Grand Prix and in the free start, finishing sixth. They've been relatively busy on the World Cup circuit, having uh, ridden in Herning alongside uh, London, Basel and Amsterdam. Unfortunately, not having the easiest of starts to the test here, though, today. Grand Prix performance was that uh, Europeans last year in Riesenbeck where they scored 
certainly the most complete of the tests we've seen so far. It's a bit better to the right than to the left for the pirouettes. Lovely to hear the support for uh, that partnership and uh, the, the disc there for uh, the Netherlands certainly getting a lot of uh, support from this uh, crowd here at the Dutch Masters. And in fact, looking forward to seeing their score because I think quite rightly that should, for all intents and purposes, move them to the top of the Grand Prix uh, leaderboard. A very composed performance. A couple of little moments certainly at the start. As we saw, uh, he's sort of having to recover from that difficult opening uh, and then as I say, began to uh, settle down as they got deeper and deeper in to the test. But there's the score, and it does indeed move it to the top by a uh, percentage margin as well, because 69565, 66376, 69475, 68370, and 68152 becomes 68.435. It's 1% clear at the top of this uh, FEI World Cup Grand Prix here, the FEI Dressart World Cup Grand Prix competition for uh, that second partnership and in fact it moves the uh, Dutch at the moment into first and second place because you have uh, the Rendelisca here and Hero leading and uh, Gian van der Rutte sitting there in uh, second place after the uh, opening four tests that have uh, been completed here so far today. It's just what really is a team competition. Well, we move on and uh, now for uh, Switzerland, another rider, in fact, that rode at the European Championships in uh, Riesenbeck last year, part of the Swiss team. And it was her senior championship debut, having competed uh, from ponies back in 2013 all the way through ponies, juniors, young riders, and into the under-25 category. This is uh, Charlotte Rogerson. And she's riding here with that uh, championship ride for Mora. Charlotte currently sits in 20th place on the Western European League, competed in Basel, having uh, picked up additional points in the rounds last year in uh, Slovakia and in Poland. This is a ride that has uh, brought her up through the ranks, competing in those uh, youth classes, youth young uh, and under 25 championships. They then made their senior CDI debut in uh, 2022, while still competing alongside under 25s. the senior Grand Prix competition they have once broken the 70% barrier 70.217 
been a good start. There's just a little bit of connection there in the rain back. They certainly had one of the strongest starts to a Grand Prix test in their uh, career to date. Nice and relaxed in the canter. And the balance a little bit there in the final change.
A little bit of loss of the balance in the zigzag course, costing them quite uh, heavily on the mark there, but also some uh, rather nice elements at the start. It was such a strong beginning to uh, the test there for uh, Charlotte Rogerson, and uh, she's a rider that on Saturday will be looking, if she can, to just try and uh, work her way up the uh, course. Scores coming through uh, at the moment, though, in two uh, fifth place for uh, Switzerland. 66, 196, 66, 08, 7, 67, 71, 7, 68, 1, 5, 2, and 65, 435. It becomes 66.717%. And uh, still keeps her within 2% of uh, the leading scores. So uh, for the moment, the uh, performance is keeping a uh, uh, great level of consistency. And uh, the judges keeping their marks very, very tightly grouped. And in fact, when you look at the individual spread of uh, which judge has which rider in which place at the moment, for instance, you have one judge with uh, Diana Porsche, who's in uh, fourth, of course, says uh, put her at the top. But it, it always, of course, they're looking from different perspectives, different positions around the arena, always going to get that little bit of movement. That's what uh, brings those individual eyes and talent of judging good to bear and it's like a combination of scores that overall at the moment has the Evander Disca leading the way but Charlotte Rodgerson there unfortunately unable to match their uh, previous high scores because as I said in the past they have scored up to 70% uh, but more often to not they're scoring around 68.8 so uh, a little bit uh, under that uh, today. Well, we get set to uh, turn our attention now to this next partnership. It's uh, Yassini Ramuni, who uh, rides for Morocco. A rider that has uh, competed at the World Cup final with this horse in Leipzig in uh, 2022. This is called All At Once. He rode this horse as well in those uh, Tokyo Olympics. In fact, it was his uh, second Olympic outing, having uh, also competed back in London 2012 when he rode to Floresco NRW, which was also a horse that he rode at the uh, 2014 World Championships. This ride all at once. Also rode at the World Championships in Herning. He is now 14 years of age, this stallion. Yeah, out of an IPS Gravaldi mare. He's another, in fact, that uh, recently took the trip out to Doha to compete in the five-star event, that uh, big prize money event, finished in the seventh place in the freestyle. He did ride in Mechlin in December. He scored 66.131 that day in the Grand Prix. Unfortunately, it wasn't quite enough to get him through to uh, the freestyle. So the horse has been competing at Grand Prix now since 2019. They've only once scored over 70%. It was a 70.935. It came in uh, Exlu here in the Netherlands back in 2021, but certainly putting in a solid half pass. It's been a very neat and tidy start.
with some nice trot work. My pirouettes there. It's the end of the test. Very reasonable. And now just coming down this centre line. Rushed in the passage. Again, we want to get a bit more energy in the PF, but it's still a solid final line. Square as well to uh, finish things off all at once. The beautiful stallion there by MPM. The ride for Morocco's Yassin Rumuni, the uh, sixth of our uh, partnerships, to uh, head down the centre line here at the Dutch Masters here in Satoma Bosch. So, congratulations to them. A lot of appreciation as well as their. Uh, Congratulations as well by the Indian Renounce member. And there's their score for the moment into third place of the six we've seen. 67.5, The judge of just unfortunately putting the score down a little bit there for them. 67.413 to uh, move into uh, third place. Yes, in that it was a really solid test and the combination so well established at this level. A yeah, tremendous pathfinder representing Morocco. And there's some really nice drop work in there. So they have uh, moved in to third place. That score for your reference is 67.413. To remind you, second place is 67.478. So very very tight between uh, the uh, riders at the top, but it's uh, Devinder the Riska that is uh, overall, for the moment at least, still in the lead. And then came this lady. There are perhaps no words to describe the achievements of Isabel Murph in the sport of the dressage. She is quite simply a legend of the uh, dressage arena. And a lady that is, of course, been a, uh, I think, best said, a pathfinder for many since she first appeared at a championship back in uh, 1989. She rode on Vingo up as uh, part of the team that took the gold medal. In those uh, European championships, she has been almost an ever present part of their championships at every single level from European to world to Olympic Games and of course has uh, been successful on uh, each and every occasion. Uh, perhaps though uh, greatest achievements as well winning those three back-to-back -back World Cup finals and of course she has won four in all she won the first back in 2007 before going on in 2017, 18 and 19 across Omaha, Paris and Gothenburg with uh, my gold OLD to claim the title. This ride is the beautiful 14-year-old DSP uh, Quantas. And uh, this ride, of course, at the moment, Isabel, who sits in joint fourth place on the Western European League, as uh, both herself and uh, Lottie, Lottie Fry, have both won two and finished second in one event. Of course, it was in Amsterdam where uh, Lottie, in fact, of course, came out on top and uh, Isabel here and uh, Quantan's finished in uh, second place. So there'll be a tremendous battle, I'm sure, once more between them, as uh, we have uh, come to expect and can uh, look forward to. Over the years, these uh, two, in terms of uh, Grand Prix competition, back in uh, 2020 and in 2021 at uh, four-star events, on two occasions, went through the 80% mark in Grand Prix. Now, as you can see already, a, a different level of quality relaxations to this arena, showing wonderful harmony great expression, beautiful paces, and the level goes up.
it is such a difficult moment within the test with the horses. They always feel they can predict what's coming in that uh, transition from the walk to the PF, uh, to the passage. And it is the passage of the PF course, where this horse really excels. she has with her horses, that tremendous relationship, the way she is able to adjust her beautiful mark for the extended as well. the fact when she's riding as well she just looks so effortless in the sun the tremendous harmony she has with her horses but it's, it's that ability to almost look motionless in the sun and you know how hard she's working but that that control and that connection with the horses through the reins it's through the seat it's through the legs getting a lot of appreciation Fabulous to see. And then Winter Schultz and Victoria Maxuda there, the editors of the DSP Quantas. And look at the score as well. Across the board, 75, 326, 76, 739, 77, 717, 75, 652, and 73, 478. All those numbers mean 75.782% to the right. The standard here in Satogan Bosch in this FEI. Dressage World Cup Grand Prix. So it's about certainly putting a marker down for the uh, remaining combinations. And she'll uh, very much be looking, of course, both her and Lottie, if 
they were to win here, would of course pick up an additional 20 points. Now, that would mean that they would then move above Patrick Kittle in the overall standings. It would mean they would, one of those two would then end up at the top of the Western European League going in to the final. The other rider that's also in position next year is also Morgan Babato, who we'll see a bit later, the French rider. Again, we'll win for her here over the uh, weekend. Those three riders, as well as Patrick Kittle, seem to be that it's been a real monster of a year for him. He'll still go there on top, but it is, uh, and there is every chance that Isabel, Lottie, or perhaps Morgan, but you would suspect it'll be between Lottie and Isabel. We will see. Lottie uh, trying to come a little bit later on. Certainly going to be a tremendous weekend of sport. What a start. Well, let's move on. Let's continue. Belgium go next, and Charlotte uh, Daflacui is it 16th on the Western European League after the season so far. The uh, tremendous stallion, 18 years young, Botticelli, that she uh, rides here. It's uh, stallion by Vivaldi. Cosmere, it's been a Championship ride for her, both of the World Championships and the Europeans over the last uh, two years. Again, it's a uh, ride that she has uh, developed through the sport, coming through the junior, young rider, and under 25 categories. She was uh, with us in Newminster, having also competed in Amsterdam, Mechlin, and in uh, Stuttgart. Her best position so far this season was in sixth place in Mechland in the freestyle. In terms of uh, Grand Prix performances this season, she uh, scored 71.5 in Mechland. Should mention that score as well of 71.5 in Mechland was a combination best performance in the Grand Prix competition. easy to follow somebody like Isabel and be the next person into the arena but actually she's doing a really good job at the moment. during the transition.
bit of tension creeping in there at the end of the line. Get the horse to relax a little bit more through those uh, pirouettes and the change in the middle. It's certainly better first of the pirouettes than the second. Just energy in those Pierre from Passage but she's still done a tremendous job to overcome the difficult moment kept her calm and her composure <laughs> and she was that final line is strong as well Charlotte there and the Bocicelli the Lee Sterling their test here in this FEI Dressard World Cup and they were trending towards a second place of course 68.53 is the current second place score of the Benedista. Isabel Verfo is uh, very much in charge of this class but there is the score that clearly goes into second 70.109, 67.174, and 68.696 becomes 69 0.239%, so very much moving. almost a percentage clear of the vendor to uh, put their Charlotte up in to uh, second place. And I would say it will be an important day for her as well because with the compact nature of uh, scores, and, uh, she is sort of only around 10 away from the top nine at the moment when it comes to that freestyle at the weekend and the points, that's where the points come. At the end of a freestyle, there is still an opportunity for her to perhaps uh, try and qualify as well. She would be another rider looking to try and go for the first time to the FBI Dress Archer World Cup final. And uh, that's what's going to make Saturday such a fascinating battle. Of course, you can look at Isabella Notti for the top, but it's all about the qualifying positions and uh, having so many of those riders that are tightly in that group to uh, try and find their way up and in at the end. It is uh, that last chance saloon, so it'll be a uh, tremendous afternoon. Well, this young lady has uh, been to the World Cup final before. Uh, she's been on five separate occasions. Most recently, last year, where she uh, took this tremendous part with her, Sir Donna Hall, the second OLD, to uh, what would be his fourth World Cup final. First went in 2018. This is Morgan Barbaton, of course, who rides for France. Last time in the World Cup final, she found her way in to uh, the top ten. Of course, she's another that has uh, come to the fore in recent years and has had a tremendous career. So originally, she rode for Spain, but now very much connected under the French flag and 
been for a good number of years. We've got two tremendous horses, Havana Libre, of course, she's also ridden a championship level last year in Risenbeck. So Don Waldo has uh, been, he's 18 now, this stallion, and he has been such a tremendous partner to her. These two competed together in uh, London in Excel in the World Cup round there. track record of scoring well over 70% in many, many Grand Prix over the years. We'll see what and who that uh, features today. And of course, Morgan, when it comes, as I said a short while ago, when we were watching Isabel finish off, she is also in a position today, or on Saturday, you know, she was, it's the outside chance, you, because you would of course look, as I've said to Isabel and Monty, but if Morgan was somehow to up a big score here, there is still a chance for her to move her way to the top of the Western European League, and so all that to look at as well. But already off to a solid start, as you can see, compared to uh, Isabel's scores, just making a sort of percentage mark through the half passes. And it's that level of consistency throughout the course of the entirety of the test. We've learnt time and time again at this level, every single individual mark counts in such an important way. And when you're talking, you know, across five judges of, well, about a thousand plus marks, but every one of them is so important. Been a little bit disappointed with the way the Piat and Passage has gone so far. Does have a lovely canter. It really is expressive. You can see from the extended canter mark, she's certainly able with that to be able to make the most of that, and it, it really elevates and pushes those marks. And she's now starting to build a solid second place towards a, second, a solid second place at the moment. changes.
beautiful presence in the arena. This is a stallion that always has. As he dances his way towards this uh, final line, it's to be solidifying that score over 70%. Ship now that have ridden in well over 50 FEI Grand Prix tests in their career. Not in the final PF, but outside of that, you can see just what a combination these two make. It is such a tremendous relationship they have built over all those years together. And uh, Sir Donahall, the second OLD, still looking absolutely phenomenal. But it is uh, that relationship for Morgan and her stallion there. But we now look to see the score. And uh, that'll be the second of the marks today, over 70%. And it is across the panel, 71.304, 72.689, 70.978, 60.4. Lower there, 70.271. So 70.696. So a variation of what have we got? Four percent or two percent there between our uh, five judges. And uh, that all leveling out to see Morgan moving into uh, seven. Hello there. There's still plenty of options and plenty of things uh, that uh, Sir Donald hasn't seen around this arena before. But it moves France in to uh, second place and the second score over 70% as we reach what is uh, to all intents and purposes the halfway mark of this FEI dressage World Cup event here at the Dodger Masters in Satoko Bosch. Still riders for the Netherlands, Belgium, Great Britain, France to come and uh, tremendous names, horses and riders great combinations to get excited about as we uh, get in to uh, the second half in due course and, uh, to that, but as it currently stands, of course, it is uh, Isabel Berth that leads the way. She has uh, put herself on top for the moment as we uh, just see Morgan saying thank you there to uh, Sir Donald OLV. So there's the scene as we uh, reach the halfway mark, and uh, that means we'll take a pause. And there's the score 75.782 is about there. And that uh, was the lead from Morgan and Sir Donald in second. Charlotte to Botticelli there in third. And Amanda Morgan, the rest of the home nation, currently sitting in fourth place. But it is a uh, sizable score already on the board at 75.782% here in the FBI. World Cup Grand Prix in uh, Satoko Bosch. That is uh, there to be uh, aimed at for those uh, remaining horses and riders. It is far from done. That is uh, for certain. And uh, it's already been a uh, thrilling start, a graceful start, a uh, really interesting start to the competition here. And uh, looking forward to seeing how this uh, Grand Prix develops when we come back in that second half of this FEI Dressage World Cup, the Grand Prix here at uh, the Dutch Masters. The judges, leaving the Sumi players will be back in a moment.
Well, here's the list of those uh, still to come. As you can see, we have three for the Netherlands, uh, two for Belgium, Germany, France, and uh, Great Britain. Left in the draw, including the uh, champion Team Fry with the uh, twice winning World Cup round this year, Everdale. So maybe one to uh, perhaps challenge Isabel, but there's uh, plenty of interest throughout the draw. Right away from the uh, start, the wonderful uh, Tolman Eston's Titanium and the uh, Ballet de Rider America. We'll let's uh, see how everything begins to unfold. So those two uh, find their way through to the freestyle. Mark Madam Isabel Bird, who leads the way with uh, DSP uh, Quantas and Gordon Malaton and Sir Donahall II OLD. Germany and France 75.782 is that top of the score and 70.696 sits in second at the moment. Charlotte uh, Dovkui sitting there for Belgium with Bocceselli in third, currently on 69.239%. It is uh, small gaps all the way down through those that we have seen so far. Well, the judges are making their way back into place. As they uh, retake their seats and uh, the stage is set for the restart. Already here tonight, we have Marriott Sanders van Gunswinkel for the Netherlands. Rafael Sara for France at H. We have Miss Ulrike uh, Nivelle, the president for this class for Germany, sat at C. Dutch judge Miss uh, Jenny Van Twist sits at M. And Mr. Lars Andersen for Sweden is sat there on the side at B, which is, of course, to the right as we look out on this arena. Wonderful setting and tremendous excitement building with so much at stake. This is the 11th leg of the Western European League that started in Herning back in October. And uh, from Denmark to France to Germany to Spain to London to Belgium. They then moved to Switzerland before their first trip to the Netherlands and back to Germany. And then, of course, to Sweden now here to the final round in the Netherlands once again. Final this year will take place for the very first time in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia in Riyadh in April. It is a uh, combined event with the FEI Dressage World Cup being hosted alongside the uh, FEI Jumping World Cup as has uh, been the case in uh, recent years. Those events uh, linked together to give us a fabulous week of a sporting spectacular action i'm sure it'll be a uh, big moment for the sport to uh, break new ground and uh, take the best dressage horses in the world to uh, compete in saudi arabia where it'll uh, of course be bringing together the uh, best of uh, the horses and riders from the western european league but also from the central european league the pacific league north american and then the title defender herself. Well, the lights are coming up. We must be uh, getting uh, nearly there. We are indeed. There's a great audience in tonight for uh, what is the first of four days of competition. Isabel Verfen has uh, set the standard with uh, Madeleine Winterschultz and uh, Victoria McDonough's uh, DSP Quantas. 75782 is the target for those still to come. Uh, to uh, start things off, Marika van der Putten for the Netherlands will get things back underway with the gelding. This is Total Levetten's Titanium RS2 NOP, the Tatalas gelding out of age doing a mare of uh, Jacques Lemon. Saskia Lemon's uh, Avinian. She rode this horse into eighth place at the FEI Dressage World Cup final last year in Omaha in the USA. We'll 
also her ride on the Dutch team at the World Championships in Herning. New Minster in February saw her through the 70% mark again in the, the Grand Prix. She went on to finish in seventh place. I mean, as a partnership, they last year here in Sotogenbosch finished second in the Grand Prix on 76.761 and went on to score over 80% in the Grand Prix, but it's never easy when you've had a slightly rocky start, but this is a combination you would expect from their previous performances to be able to push on through that 80, or sorry, 70% mark here today. They did so in Amsterdam, they uh, came very close to doing so in uh, Stuttgart, which I guess was perhaps a little bit disappointing, but they certainly got things right in New Minster. Again today, just a little bit of tension in that extended drop, but our pass is looking much better. Just a little bit rushed into the rain back, it wasn't like the halt stayed there for very long. against them in terms of their overall scores. It is a horse that's always had a lovely PF. And you can see the quality marks from the Passage and PF really helping get, bring that score back up. But it's the tension in the walk that just keeps them a little bit more levelled off. relaxing into the counter work as ever.
just feel we need a little bit more lift in the changes. A little bit more energy. through the pirouettes. Again, bringing some nice passage towards the uh, judges here on the final centre line, and it's really quality work to uh, finish things off, and a lovely transition set as well through the Piaf to uh, really help bring that mark up over 71%, but it could have been, well, more. It certainly would have been more. It was the obvious error in the rain back and halt a little earlier in the test and of course some of the drop work today just uh, letting them down and in the on time changes just a little bit of tension and needing to bring a little bit more lift and energy but it is still a strong score it is still into second place and well done there to Marika Van de Putin 71.522, 71.304, 71.087, 72.065, 71.304 71 becomes 71.456%. So uh, clearly going up there above Morgan Bamato, who now drops in to uh, third. It's above there, so still leading the way. And uh, that there moves the uh, Dutch star up the order and at the moment puts her in to the uh, podium positions here as we uh, now look towards these uh, final seven combinations to uh, come forward in this FEI Dressage Grand Prix. The freestyle to uh, come up on Saturday afternoon. We'll uh, have a little day off from the dressage tomorrow and bring it to you on uh, Saturday afternoon live on FEI TV. Well, we next have our combination for Germany. Germany's second rider of this Grand Prix event with their leading rider being Isabel Werf out in front at the moment. We now turn to uh, one of the rising stars in the, ter the form here of Bianca. Bianca Novrag Ullenbrock, who rides Florine OLD. This uh, mare by Foundation 2 out of a Lodis Crusader mare has also proved to be uh, very accomplished and a big part of uh, youth teams as she has progressed through the sport, coming up through ponies, juniors, young riders and into uh, under 25s. She has uh, taken and been part of uh, team gold medals at numerous championships in the youth divisions and has also herself taken a individual young rider gold alongside other individual medals in her youth career. that she's riding. She also, of course, Florine, the 12-year-old mare, made a World Cup debut with last year in Neumünster, where she recently just actually finished fourth in the freestyle, which was a uh, personal best result on the Western European League and the World Cup classes. She's competed this year in Lyon, Stuttgart and Amsterdam. First time into the uh, 
top 10, so to get up into fourth, a uh, great achievement. In terms of Grand Prix scores over the years, the best one came in Lyon last year. The combination scoring 72.435%. It's always perhaps a little bit easy to get misled with these uh, strong scores at the start, but you've got to start strong if you're going to be able to finish strong as well. And it certainly has that lovely rain back as well in a very good start. Another horse that's just got wonderful grace. Just needs a little bit more energy through the PF. And here could perhaps just let the uh, head stretch and the back stretch a little bit more down. Looking for that freedom, relaxation over the back. And then of course as you pick up the reins into this walk, medium walk, you demonstrate the pace without the horse getting tense. start to the counter work. You have an amazing consistency to the way that they perform in every Grand Prix test bar two that they've competed in. They've been clear of 70%. But at the moment, this is looking even better than that. Could well put her in position for a combination best performance. Beautiful 12-year-old mare really has come of age this season. She's 
sits in 18th place on the Western European League. Again, we'll be looking for bigger points when it comes to uh, that freestyle, but that is a well-deserved applause because that is a score that is certainly looking towards a top two as things currently stand. And uh, Bianca Novanagel-Lembrock, who had that uh, tremendous performance in your Minster, has uh, certainly again performed if not her very best test in terms of scores maybe we will see so 74 804 is her best previously 72 783 is the score today so it isn't quite a personal best but it's still much more than they uh, brought in uh, newminster or leon this uh, season 73 2 6 1 73 1 5 2 72 3 9 1 73 3 7 0 and 71 7 3 9 so uh, all combining there to uh, give them a day to celebrate here in the dutch masters indoor uh, brabant the uh, horse show a uh, very special moment then for the combination from germany still of course yes we know the leading score does not change it is 75 7 8 2 but that was a quality performance from a horse and rider combination that uh, didn't make any obvious errors throughout the course of their test so sure we'll be absolutely delighted with the uh, judges all of them agreeing to put her in second place as well so kept it uh, very neat and tidy and we will uh, look forward to the freestyle. Well, Belgium have another chance with two still to go. This is the Fleur de Win and Flynn FRH. She is currently in 13th place on the Western European League with just three of her four counting scores recorded so she will score this week which will certainly uh, move her forward this was a ride at the european championships her championship debut came in germany last year this is her fourth outing therefore having already finished sixth in the freestyle in London, third in Mechlin and sixth in Amsterdam. Our pre performances seeing a 72.283 scored in Amsterdam when she finished in ninth place. So, can she repeat that today? We will see if she did. It would at the moment put her into third place. With the exception of the PF, again, they really have shown this season in the Grand Prix competitions that they are a far more consistent combination. The uh, last 12 months we've seen that build and build, and as I'm saying, this year on the World Cup circuit it has certainly become notable with their scores now, and, and again, in terms of their overall average, very much on par with that very strong outing. Amsterdam.
we've already seen those beautiful two-time uh, tempi changes and again showing confidence through the extended canter allowing the frame to open It's these sorts of tests where the tiniest of moments are making differences to the position because with just that small sort of couple of percentage between what is currently second and fourth these two trying to extract every single mark as they come down the center line and that drop was lovely and now moving through the passage into this uh, final PF that activity Plenty of applause, plenty of appreciation. Quite where that eventually slots in will come down to those uh, final marks, perhaps even those general impression marks from our uh, panel of judges there. Flora uh, de Vin and Flynn FRH, the partnership for Belgium. We'll know in a moment or so quite how that uh, features. Anywhere from uh, second to fourth, it's gone into third. So well done to Flynn FRH. 72 174, 72 935, 73 043, 72 174, 70.109 to move into uh, third place there. 72.087 to uh, comfortably go into the top three at the moment. Behind Germany, it is who uh, are first and second. It is now Belgium in the Third, but it is still Isabel there that leads the way from Bianca Novak Olenbrock, who at the moment sits in uh, second place. But uh, that uh, performance there, I'm sure, will be uh, one they'll be very happy with. Certainly getting very close to the score that they picked up in uh, Amsterdam, but for the moment, certainly puts them that little bit higher up as well. Well, what does that leave us? It leaves us five more to go in the Grand Prix here in uh, Setogenbosch. And now to a uh, combination for Great Britain, but of course uh, very much with its uh, Dutch connection as well, because this is the uh, Tremendous Stallion by Lord Leverdale. This is Everdale. Because, uh, rider is Lottie Fry. This is her and the uh, Van Alst Super Stallion. Lottie, of course, with Glamourdale lifting the World Championship title in Herning. And uh, now with uh, this uh, tremendous ride, she has been in such fabulous form. She, of course, is competing in what is only these two's fourth round of the season. And like Isabel, she's tied identically on scores in the Western European League with Isabel Berth. We'll, uh, of course, have that chance to perhaps move to the top. But it'll be a rematch <laughs> from Amsterdam over these... Uh, well, over this next test and, of course, on uh, Saturday as well. Isabel Berth leads on 75-7-8-2. In Amsterdam, it was Lotti and Everdale, this 15-year-old uh, stallion that came out on top in both the Grand Prix and the freestyle. In fact, 
she of course went to London where she was beaten by her British teammate Charlotte Dujardin and Imhotep in both the Grand Prix and the Freestyle despite scoring 77 plus and 85 plus in the Grand Prix and the Freestyle but then since Mecklen first and first in the Grand Prix and the Freestyle and Amsterdam she did the same again in fact in Amsterdam in the Grand Prix she scored 77.761% and went on to score over 88% in the Freestyle difficult start when you look at the score but it was just the first movement and there's a long way to go although of course it is that simple consistency that has uh, given her the score that has put her on top at the moment but this partnership we know from experience very much have the ability to uh, put together some big scores and perhaps try and recover that mark from the early stages Certainly looking a little bit tense in places as Everdale this evening. And a couple of minor moments certainly counting against them in terms of the scores, but it can be the counterwork so often where things really begin to excel. She will be aware she certainly needs to make sure that the remainder of this test is mistake free. If she's to get on terms and perhaps even rival Isabel here this afternoon.
moment going into the PM. Three. Test that has had lots of lovely moments in it. It's certainly a partnership that we know has such strength, but today isn't going to be their day in terms of overcoming Isabel Berth, but it is uh, still looking very good for second place at the moment. Opening of the test will have counted against them, and uh, in a tight competition like it is between uh, Lottie and Isabel here today, it is uh, every mark that you need. And just little moments there, just never quite looked as relaxed as Isabel. Isabel's uh, test today was absolutely graceful. With uh, and there's the scores. It is. 74 783 74 5 6 5 74 783 75 2 1 7 17 1 point 4 1 3 certainly there's the uh, given there 74 1 5 2 as a mark it means that it is three uh, percent away from uh, isabel Berth and dsp uh, Quantas. it doesn't mean that it won't turn around in the freestyle but they just didn't quite have the edge we saw in uh, Amsterdam. No, comparatively, that's you know three percent difference to the score there. But Monty Fry and Isabel Berth. It's only the Grand Prix. They'll be looking as well towards the freestyle. That's, as I've said before, where the points are handed out. Four more to go. So we're far from done. It is at the moment Germany, Great Britain, Germany. But uh, France, of course, we've seen once and we see again. At the moment, Morgan Babapont sitting in sixth place for France. We're set on a hall the second OLD. Now it's the turn of uh, Pauline Basquin as the next to come forward in this Grand Prix test. She's riding here this evening with Seratuis, uh, Der Rima Z IFCE. It's gelding by uh, Sandro Hitt is out of a uh, Voltaire mare. The balance just gone, so I think we'll be underway in a moment or so. These two rode at their first championships for France in the World Championships in Herning two years ago. And as well in Risenbeck at the Europeans last year. And of course, like all the French riders will, I'm sure, have a yet very strong focus to uh, hoping to be part of Paris this summer with those uh, Olympic Games getting ever closer. 3% is their uh, previous best Grand Prix score. Amsterdam, they scored 72.5 in the Grand Prix. They having competed in Lyon, Stuttgart and in Amsterdam. Lyon certainly the high point though on home soil where they ended up finishing on the podium, finished in third that day in Lyon in the freestyle, having already finished fourth. That's where the personal best came as well in the Grand Prix tests. It's lovely 14 year old. Again just to sort of point out the obvious but certainly from third down it's exceptionally tight between the scores and these riders, these horses, really happy to make sure they're on their game today. Because it can make the difference, a considerable difference, to where you are. And already with such a strong start, it also proves to the point of how difficult the start was for Lottie and Everdale.
shuffle through the Passage, Piaf Passage section there, and uh, once again, Willie Mask win here and Seratus Darima Z putting together a wonderful test at the moment. Shame for the mistake in the tempi changes, because as you'll notice from the scores, that's obviously what has uh, dropped them down from potential third to, as it currently is, somewhere between fifth and sixth. But as I said earlier, it's with it being so close, those mistakes really are going to hit your mark. And these two had that exception, given a tremendous showing. Sitting in 24 from the Western European League. Just bringing this final line. I mean, look at the beauty, the passage at the end, and the PF is maybe not as strong, but the passage was amazing. And again, even with that. Error in the tempi changes has uh, pushed her score back up. She'll uh, climb her way back into fourth. It is just such a shame for that one line. Otherwise, that I uh, uh, have a feeling could have got uh, well, certainly would have been up into third. It's not going to go that high now, but those two so established now at this level and getting more and more confident in so many respects with every single test that they are able to uh, perform together. Every reason to think even with an error, she got penalized by the judges in terms of uh, how the score dropping right the way down. She still goes into four. 73043, 74183, 71196, and 71739. So it's a total of 72,478. That's within 0.3 of a percentage of mark of third. And, uh, I think, as I say, third would have been almost guaranteed, and uh, the problem not come in the uh, one time changes. But uh, it's part of the sport, is trying to find your way as close as you can to perfection, always looking for perfection. And uh, that's why we celebrate, of course, when those magical uh, tens get awarded. What it would be to have uh, those uh, individual scores available to us like we used to. Well, through the pirouette, 
it's meaning that at the moment it is still Germany first and third, Great Britain in second. We have three to go, two for the Netherlands and one for Belgium. The first of the two for the Dutch is uh, Thomas Avesta, Hexagon's uh, Ishi Weiss, the lovely great stallion by Hexagon's uh, Uribe Quill out of the Negro Mare. Palmer, who was with this horse, ridden on the Europeans in the past, last year, as well as taking this horse to fifth at the World Cup final in Omaha last season. And that uh, top five finish, a second uh, World Cup outing, also rode in the World Championships. finishes already in Gothenburg and in Mechlin. In fact, in Gothenburg, she finished third in the Grand Prix. She scored 70.283 that day, although, of course, she scored much higher than that in other Grand Prix competitions. But again, that extended trot at the start. Untidy. And then coming back from a low base to make it much harder. numerous occasions had over 73% in a Grand Prix test but today the bell has just rung from the judges Sadly, they have been asked to uh, retire by the president of the grand jury. I just, uh, just spotted something there. But, uh, she's otherwise a little bit unhappy or concerned about. And, uh, of course, the uh, welfare of the horse is uh, paramount and comes first to the judges, riders, all of us in this sport. There is nothing that is uh, higher up the list. And, see absolutely everything that's going on directly in front of you and the judge there of course just spotting something and just walking over to the rider and just so, hello we don't miss a little bit spooked by the fact that the board is being removed maybe taking a bit of energy out by the very calmly done by the arena team down there. but that is uh, it is such a shame because the board of course takes good as you guys there will have been building towards today and uh, hoping for so, so much more, but it uh, hasn't worked out that way, which is uh, disappointing in front of your home crowd as well. So uh, they retire, and it leaves us just two to go, although it'll be a little bit of a pause before we get to that penultimate partnership, I would guess. They are due in the moment. Too long because I'm running into stuff to smidge by Dr. Limes at the moment. So there is a chance. But of course, dressage is always done to time. And uh, it's part of, the, part of the fact that it's time. See, it allows the riders and the horses to know exactly what time they're expected to go down that centre line. And that's important because, of course, you sort of got to work backwards from that time through your warm-up routine, the, uh, whatever routine that you've established with your horse and at home is most likely eventually the routine that you will use in the warm-up arena. Lovely facilities here out the back as well, here in Indor Brabant. And of course, just behind the black curtain there, we can't see it from here, but there's a, a tremendous warm-up arena. And that's at the moment, of course, just waiting for the call. It's obviously a rider's choice if they go any earlier. But there's the order at the moment. And what a story, what a turnaround from Amsterdam, because that's, I guess, the comparison where those two were battling before. But it is Isabel today that looks uh, to, well, she's certainly beaten Lottie. Whether she stays there or not comes down to the final two. But DSP Otaz, 75, 782. Everdell today just not quite able to reach those heights. Isabel's test was a tremendous, tremendous piece of riding 
to uh, watch the uh, grace and presence of uh, those two in the arena. But all the way down, as I've mentioned a few times, is the closeness of the scores. And uh, that's why if you have a little problem, have a little error, suddenly you're gonna drop a position or two. We saw that sadly with uh, Pauline Basquin, the uh, French rider that six in fourth could have easily otherwise been up in third. But you have to give full marks to Bianca Novorog Olenbrock, the young German rider who is sat in third with Florine OLD because that was a stellar performance. It was fault free and consistent to a T. And has uh, for the moment got her up in the uh, top three of this uh, Grand Prix. Well, here we go. I did say we might not have to wait too long because we're now back on time as uh, we were running a smidge behind, but we're there. It's uh, Emily Schultons that goes uh, next. It is the first of the final two and the final partnership for the Netherlands with uh, Indian Rock, the lovely stallion by Apache out of a uh, Vivaldi mare. This has uh, been a horse. In fact, she has brought sort of through the levels, having uh, competed in young horse championships in the past and taken it all the way through to uh, the World Championships and, of course, the uh, Europeans over the last couple of years. And some lovely horses to ride in her career. Of course, has been to the World Cup final once before on the tremendous horse Apache. She took herself into uh, eighth place when she rode in uh, Gothenburg in 2019. More recently, though, this is the duo that won the Grand Prix and they won the freestyle in Newminster. They arrive here after that uh, fabulous win in the ninth leg of the series. Both rounds. They scored 73, 4, 5, 6 that day. She repeats that today. She'll finish in third. But it again just shows you the quality of uh, horses and riders. The freestyle here on Saturday is going to be something very, very special. It was, I mean, with the quality and quantity of that quality here, it's sort of what a precursor to the uh, World Cup final it really will be. These two have never scored in a Grand Prix it was 74.783. If they could find their way back up into those sort of heights today, they would find their way ahead of Everdell and Lottie Fry. through the PF and the second passage looking a little bit better as well. Just a little bit more relaxation though perhaps in this walk. Allow the frame to open up, let the nose come down. Solid marks through the transition and the passage and the piaf. Comfortable through those movements. Certainly at the moment, she's on target. Could well be a personal best or a combination best score here today. Certainly so beginning to put Lottie Fry under a little bit of pressure.
point at the moment in terms of those scores between second and third. A little bit untidy to the passage. really coming in towards the end of that test sadly is just counted against their marks instead of going up to challenge the sort of more stabilized but that is still a phenomenal horse and rider combination and to have that tremendous win just two legs ago and I'm looking forward to their part to play in that uh, freestyle here on uh, Saturday afternoon. But in the uh, Grand Prix tonight, I think heading perhaps towards a uh, podium position, which will uh, certainly please the Dutch to see one of theirs up there in the top three, Emily Schultzens and Indian Rock. A uh, lovely stallion there by Apache. So. Uh, I doubt too long before we get confirmation of exactly where the score has found its way. And it is indeed into third. 74.130, So there you have a 73.652. And uh, that goes into the top three. Germany, Great Britain, and the Netherlands. The one, two, three. Bianca, Novogrunbrock into fourth, and the rest of the pack shuffle down below. But it is still with one to go. The German superstar Isabel Werth, the legend that is with DSP Aquatas, that leads the way on a score of 75.782. Interestingly, the judge at uh, B actually had Emily here, who we're watching on the replays, top ahead of Isabel. The only judge to do so, but uh, scored her almost a percentage mark more. It was uh, had a lot of points. Well, here we go. Larissa Paulilis is the last to go down the centre line. She will in just a moment. This is going to be Belgium. The Ride is the gelding by Ampierre. It is Blambo. Alongside first step, Valentin has seen her being a part of uh, recent championship outings. She uh, rode at the Europeans in 2021 and in the World Championships. That was with first step, Valentin. But of course, it was Flambeau she took to uh, Tokyo to those uh, Olympic Games and then to the Europeans last year, where she qualified all the way through to the freestyle. 72283 uh, is there. 73283, I'm oh, sorry to repeat myself, is their best Grand Prix performance. That came in Newminster when she finished second in the Grand Prix behind Emily Schultons. Again, it just demonstrates the level that is here and uh, how hard it is for all of these horses and riders. The, the freestyle will be quite sensational on uh, Saturday. Sixth place was the uh, freestyle result for them in Neumünster. Quite a strong year with uh, top ten finishers as well in Lyon and in Mechlin. Should be hoping, of course, as she sits in 12th at the moment, to uh, pick up more points than she did for the 11th place in Stuttgart. That's the one I guess she's trying to replace in terms of her Western European League scores to try and get qualified for the final. A little bit of the contact there, and of course she's had to put her leg on to get that contact back, and in doing so, stepping forward, so that will You'll see it on the marks come through in a moment. Yeah, 
4.8 average from the judges on the rain back. And that unfortunately has, in this very tightly compressed field, left to have a lot to do. Consistency through the elements of the counter work. Mistake coming in the changes again, it's made everything just that much harder because she's had the marks through other elements of the test that would have certainly seen her perhaps pushing towards the top six here this afternoon.
Well, they finish things off, and as the uh, last to go here in this Grand Prix test, Larissa Polilis there and uh, Flambeau for Belgium. Unfortunately, just a couple of uh, errors really has uh, counted against them in terms of their scores with the uh, one time changes and, of course, the rain back earlier on in the test of uh, these two. So, that, of course, having an impact on the score and they're uh, fighting their way towards the top 10, which they have achieved, and we will then foresee them in the pre start as well. 67 5, 69 3, 2, 3, 9, 68 9, 1, 3, 70, 70.109, 69 becomes their final score 69.152. So congratulations, it's official, that Isabel Berth and DSP Quintanz, the fabulous gelding by quarterback, of course, of Madeleine Winter-Schultz and Victoria Maxtura, has come out on top here this afternoon, 75.782%, as we uh, just flip back to the highlights of uh, Larissa there. But it is Isabel's day as uh, she reverses the result from uh, Amsterdam. The uh, Netherlands certainly seen a uh, strong battle between the German rider and the British rider Lottie Fry. Of course, then an Everdale, the Australian there finishing of uh, hers and uh, the Van Alst horses in second place today. But it is still good news for the Dutch because Emily Shelton has uh, found her way into third with uh, Indian Rock, the uh, lovely stallion. So as the arena is set for presentation, let's firm up the Grand Prix results. And there you can see the scores as well. It was awfully close all the way. Isabel there from Charlotte Fry, or Lottie Fry, Emily Schultens, and then well done Bianca Novag Olebrock for Germany, the young lady there with Florine in form. Fifth, going to Pauline Blasquin, another that could have had a different story today. Seratus Terima, ZIFCE for France, and Flor Vin for Belgium with uh, sixth place there. Interesting from start to finish, and you know, the freestyle here is going to be electric. It is going to be one of the best of the year. There is no doubt about it with the uh, horse and rider combinations lining themselves up for the final push on the road to Riyadh. It'll be an interesting battle, of course. I'm no doubt Lottie will want to retake top spot. She's looking for a hat trick, but so is Isabel. You know, but uh, can Everdell and Lottie make it three in a row on the World Cup circuit this winter? Can Emily Schultens sort of find the form she did in Neumünster? You know, where will the young lady from Germany put herself? Pauline Basquin for France, could she find a podium position again, maybe after what she did in Lyon, thinking towards Paris this year? And with all of the different permutations, it is almost impossible to decide who's going to qualify to go to Riyadh of the Western European League. And as I say, depending on who comes out on top between Isabel and Lottie, will move Patrick Kittle off the top of the leaderboard at the end, the man that's led from start to almost the finish. You know, it could yet change there as well. But uh, as I say, you wouldn't sort of bet against Emily Shelton's doing something special and uh, finding her way through. Well, as you can see, the presentation party getting uh, ready down there on the arena floor. And uh, we're looking forward to that coming up very, very soon here from the uh, Dutch Masters.
Well, the scene is set. We await the arrival of the stars. Don't forget as well for that FEI dress match well free style is uh, underway at uh, 2 o'clock on Saturday de laatste kans te krijgen om punten te vragen in het klassement op weg naar de finale in april. Freestyle presented by Relayed Energy Systems. The 11th and final leg of the Western European League will get underway on Saturday here. Finale zal plaatsvinden in Riyadh. The indoor Brabant horse show in Setogebos. Hier in de West-Europese Liga dus de laatste etappe. Wacht op de top 8. In de zodanig de to nummer 8, dan houden we de spanning op, de nummer 7 daarna, de nummer 6 enzovoorts. Uh, en dan komen de beste drie gezamenlijk binnen. Less than 9% was the total percentage difference between the first and 16th here today. Quite a crowd, there's a few that have left now, but there's been quite a crowd considering, as I say, it is just a Thursday evening uh, performance and the big event with the Dutch Masters, of course, with the jumping really kicking off into gear tomorrow. Well, uh, in the build up towards that uh, freestyle here on uh, Saturday afternoon. Nobody's coming yet. I'm just taking a short moment in preparation for the presentations here in this FEI Dressage World Cup Grand Prix. Fabulous job this afternoon as ever from our panel of judges. Rice giving ceremony at position number eight in the ranking. So we're going to go to the uh, parade of honor, the lap of honor. And Sir Donald Slade. is the first to come in. It's in eighth place today. From the number seven, and Sir Donald the second, O L S V and O P. Marika van de Putten for the Netherlands in seventh place with uh, her ride, Charles uh, Weston's uh, Titanium RS2 NOP. Danish warm blood 71 for the France, tonight. Basquin, In sixth place, it is uh, Fleurdewin and Flynn FRH for Belgium. The lovely yeah, black star. Ah, van der Putten. That's called 72.087 today. At a fourth position fifth, for Germany, Bianca Novak, Olenbrock, and, and now Bianca Novak, Olenbrock, and Florin OLD for Germany. Huge congratulations to the two of them. Such a lovely horse, that beautiful pair. Star partnership for they are. 72, 7, 8, 3 was the score today. Seven, six, five, and four take their leave of the arena here. Get set to welcome in. One, two, three. Oh. 
Heartbeats. Let's wait for the three best riders of the competition. I the heartbeat here. Top three of the FER Dressage World Cup presented by Aristu Dressage. Indian Rock with Emily Scholtens op plaats nummer drie. Lottie Fry met Everdale Grand Britannia op de tweede plaats. En de hoogste score vanavond voor Isabel Wert, DSP Quantas. Ze zijn in aantocht. Two hearts working as one. These results only gives us impressive. clues towards the freestyle, but it doesn't set things in stone. That we will have to see on Saturday when we get set now to work. Well, result of 75.782. And second, 74.152. The winner representing Germany with DSP Contos. There she is, Isabel Metz. Here she comes. Second, great with Everdale. And Lottie DSP Quants. Lottie Fry in uh, second Third, place with, with Everdale. Emily and Emily Schultens for the Netherlands with Indian Rock finishing here in third place. Tremendous performances from all three of them. But Isabel today was just. In a league of her own with uh, DSP Montans. What a tremendous result that is. Prachtig entree. Hoge percentages vanavond. In deze Grand Prix. Verplicht onderdelen op de donderdagavond bij de Dutse Masters. Here comes the presentation party. Stel eens op. We laten aardtweden de winnende combinatie. Ik zei het prachtige resultaat. 75-782. Nog één keer met z'n Voor de eerste week van Isabel Wett. Germany! She certainly knows her way between the posts to uh, claim a victory. Isabel already. Twice a winner. Nodig uit om naar voren te treden. Om de Europees uit te rekken aan de rest. Isabel Wett. To that uh, fabulous win in Stuttgart. Ja, lach op het gezicht bij Isabel. U ziet het. Felicitaties van Saskia Lemmens namens de sponsor. Even een fotomomentje. Als dus kant als ze even naar voren wil kijken, oortjes naar voren. Very Dan special Philippe moment. Manier, namens de Evi in ons midden, dames en heren. Die hulde zal brengen aan de winnares van vanavond. De ESP Quantas van de quarterback Heunstein van Madeleine Winterschultz en Victoria Max Steuer. Is er wel weer in de zaal? Dank je wel, Gunst, en onze voorzitter van de Dutch Masters en de voorzitter van de jury. Zo relaxed, zo relaxed. Feliciteren onder de spotlight. De winnende combinatie. Mooi moment daar. Ze kennen elkaar reeds lang. Dank je wel, Gunst, en Isabel Wet. Dan gaan we naar de nummer 2 en de second position voor Great Britain met Everdale, Lottie Fry. Will it be that way on Saturday afternoon? Or will this partnership come back stronger after second here today? Second in London in the Grand Prix, having won the Grand Prix, of course, in Amsterdam and also in Mechelen. Philippe Barnier namens de Evi, Ankie van Gunsen, voorzitter de Dutchmaster en de voorzitter van de jury. Mooi start off as well, but uh, recovered nicely. Op plaats nummer drie, scoren vanavond 73-652, Indian Rock en Emily Schultens. Emily Schultens. Finishing here in third place, the winning partnership for Neumünster in Germany in February. 73-652 with Indian Rock. Rock, but uh, a special third place today to be able to do that so in front of uh, your uh, own uh, crowd. Uh, Massive well done uh, to the grooms as well. Of these horses uh, and the horses involved uh, in this competition. Uh, the grooms everywhere uh, involved in the sport. They are they are absolutely integral to, uh, to uh, the performance of, of these horses. Of these horses.
present the bar arrest to dressage. Volgende door Isabel werd bij DSP krant als... But this lady has worked exceptionally hard throughout her career. She is so successful. She's done it again here in the Grand Prix of this FEI Dressage World Cup. Will the story be the same in the freestyle on Saturday afternoon? We'll find out from 2 o'clock live on FEI TV. Thank you for being with us here this afternoon uh, at the Dutch Masters. It's the Bosch for the Grand Prix. Well done again to our winner, to Germany, to DSP Quantas, and to Isabel Ver. For the winner for Germany, Isabel Wetz. And the runner up for Great Britain, Plotty Pride. There they are, together. Lottie Fry in uh, Avondale. We now the winner once again. Dames and heren, the Koningin van de Dressur. Vele jaren hier op uh, de Dutch Masters in de Brabant. Nog een keer, nog een keer voor Isabel Wertz.